that the world insists that Saddam Hussein be held responsible for the damage and the destruction that he's imposed upon his neighbors and that Iraq must be made to pay reparations for the grief that they brought uh, upon such a the military battle. But more and more lawmakers on Capitol Hill say the Iraqi dictator cannot be allowed to stay in power. By leaving Saddam Hussein in power, there's always the possibility that he's going to be able to turn the tables and uh, to make this out to be some kind of political victory uh, to those in the Middle East. Uh, the only way to end this uh, once and for all is to uh, make sure that Saddam Hussein is no longer in power once uh, this conflict's over with. But how to get him out? That's the problem. President Bush has called on the Iraqi people to get rid of Saddam Hussein, but the White House says he won't be targeted because that's against the law. An executive order bans assassinations. But some conservative Republicans have introduced legislation to amend that order just to take care of Saddam Hussein. It is wrong, it is immoral to assassinate a democratic leader. There is nothing immoral about killing a tyrant, a bloodthirsty tyrant who is suppressing his own people, and if he is left alive, will cause the loss of, of thousands and thousands of lives. Most in Congress won't go that far, but Democrat Glenn English wants Mr. Bush to ask the UN to expand its resolutions to include a demand that Saddam Hussein be removed. I think there's nothing, though, to prohibit us from continuing some very tough sanctions and, and trying to encourage uh, uh, his overthrow, either by the Iraqi military, by the Iraqi people. But the top Democrat, House Speaker Tom Foley, urges caution. He says going beyond the current UN objectives could make Saddam Hussein a martyr in the Arab world and... Create generations of, uh, of Iraqis and others uh, speaking of his... Uh, name and memory with praise that he, he is not uh, a person that deserves that kind of remembrance a spokesman for house speaker foley says the worst punishment for saddam hussein may be yet to come when the iraqi dictator has to defend to his own people why his policies have brought their nation to its knees pam olson cnn capitol hill there are some burning uh, oil wells. Did you see many of those that you flew over the area? Oh, absolutely. That was uh, one of our biggest problems was uh, being able to see enemy targets around the smoke. Can you just describe for me? Uh, you probably see it from much higher up. Uh, what does that look like to you? Uh, it looks like a self-propelled gun. That would be something that, that we would go after, typically. Uh, it's hard to see in these pictures. And this That's a dug-in battle tank. Notice it's dug into the sand, pretty hard to see. No. Did you ever see, I mean, did you see the, the troops themselves? Did you see any people who the march trying to make their way out? Or are you seeing, for the most part, just uh, the, artillery and APCs and tanks? The speeds at which we fly, uh, we were seeing only the vehicles moving themselves. We could pick up both sides and could monitor uh, the good guys and the bad guys. Now, it looks like a tremendous amount of damage was done there. That looked like some kind That's of storage oil fire tanker or something. Yeah. And can you tell what this is? Uh, I have no, no idea I, what that is. I can't either. Dan, my guess is that the biggest round of applause in this group is going to go to the Secretary of Defense, uh, Dick Cheney, for his work in the Gulf. One other thing we might uh, point out at this uh, point as we wait for the President, uh, the Speaker has asked uh, members of the House who have families uh, in the Persian Gulf who have uh, uh, people or members of the armed services there uh, to serve as an escort for the President tonight. Uh, I'm told Ike Skelton, Kiki De La Garza from Texas, Jim Bunning, the old Major League ball player, uh, Clarence Mills, Doug Bernard, Beverly Byron, and uh, Jerry Costello, all members of Congress who have uh, relatives who are serving in the Persian Gulf, will escort the President when he comes down the aisle after the Cabinet and the uh, other dignitaries are seated. Well, we saw just a moment ago Tom Foley, the Speaker of the House, chatting with uh, Vice President Dan Quayle. It was a real effort made during the Persian Gulf crisis and during the war by President Bush to make sure that Vice President Quayle's profile remained at least reasonably high.
Well, indeed there was, Dan, and uh, it will be interesting to see uh, how that is reflected uh, in his um, in his approval ratings and his popularity ratings because uh, already the vice president's people are, are telling reporters and anyone who wants to listen that indeed they're gearing up for a run next year. Uh, still to be heard from, of course, is, uh, is the president himself who will decide who his running mate will be. But as of right now, the vice president's people are saying it's going to be Dan Quayle. We see John Sununu shaking hands around with Prince Scowcroft. The director of the National Security Council at his left-hand side. A lot of the talk that Sununu might be on his way out has disappeared uh, along with the Iraqi army. Huh? Well, you know, Dan, success uh, <laughs> raises a lot of things, and a lot of things have changed around Washington uh, because of this uh, great victory uh, in the Persian Gulf. I, I think it's fair to say that, uh, for now at least, the president is all but blown away any uh, serious uh, opposition for his job. Obviously, the Democrats are going to nominate someone, uh, but right now, no one can, uh, can really say uh, who that's going to be. There's no faith. Slight pause, President Bush is just behind those doors. His introduction to, no doubt, a thunderous standing ovation is about to begin. Republican in the Senate, Bob Dole of Kansas. on the shoulder for Secretary of State Jim Baker, and the President keeps moving. over glass at either side of the president's microphone as part of his teleprompter apparatus, which every modern president has used for such occasions as this. picture, General Colin Powell, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the President is praised repeatedly for his part in the victory in the Persian Gulf. from Kuwait to the United States in the center of the screen just a moment ago there.
President, uh, it is customary at joint sessions for the chair to present the president to the members of Congress directly and without further comment. But I wish to depart from tradition tonight and express to you on behalf of the Congress and the country and through you to the members of our armed forces our warmest congratulations on the brilliant victory of the Desert Storm operation. Members of the Congress, I now have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you the President of the United States. President and Mr. Speaker, thank you, sir, for those very generous words spoken from the heart about the wonderful performance of our military. Members of Congress, five short weeks ago, I came to this House to speak to you about the State of the Union, and we met then in time of war. Tonight, we meet in a world blessed by the promise of peace. From the moment Operation Desert Storm commenced on January 16th until the time the guns fell silent at midnight one week ago, this nation has watched its sons and daughters with pride, watched over them with prayer. As Commander-in-Chief, I can report to you our armed forces fought with honor and valor. And as president, I can report to the nation, aggression is defeated, the war is over. This is a victory for every country in the coalition, for the United Nations, a victory for unprecedented international cooperation and diplomacy, so well led by our Secretary of State, James Baker. It is a victory for the rule of law and for what is right. Desert Storm's success belongs to the team that so ably leads our armed forces our Secretary of Defense, and our Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Dick Cheney and Colin Powell. While you're standing, <laughs> this military victory also belo belongs to the one the British call the man of the match, the Tower of Calm, 
at the eye of Desert Storm, General Norman Schwarzkopf.